If a sample of hydrogen gas is heated, it gives off light. When you view this light through a prism, you'll see an emission spectrum consisting of bright lines at specific frequencies. Because the spectral lines come at definite intervals, this suggests that specific energy levels exist in the atom. A cross-section of an atom shows the energy levels similar to the rungs of a ladder. When energized, the electrons move temporarily to higher energy levels. As the electrons fall back to lower energy levels, they lose energy in the form of light, which produces the characteristic spectrum of the element. Because we know that the emission spectrum for each element is different, we also know that the distances between energy levels must be different for every element. lab we're going to use gas tubes and we're going to hook them up to a lamp and when we turn on the electricity the electrodes will allow um, the electrons in the gas to be excited and it will enter the plasma state so I have a sealed gas tube and it's going to have a specific type of gas in it. The first gas that we will use is hydrogen. By looking at the hydrogen lamp through a spectroscope we could see the specific emission pattern for this gas. Next, we'll swap out hydrogen for our next element. This next gas is helium. So here is helium. Got it under the spectroscope. We'll swap out this one for our next one. Here we have neon. A lot of people refer to these as neon lights, but they uh, more broadly just refer to the concept of causing a gas to go to plasma as being a, a neon lamp or neon light, but this is a true neon. That nice bright orange color indicative of neon. And we can look at it under the spectroscope to separate out the emission lines. swap this one for our next lamp. This one is argon. We go look for that one under the spectroscope. When we see this one, this one's bands are a little bit more difficult to see because a lot of them are in the UV spectrum and we cannot see uh, this with our eyes. And then the last one that we will do the last one that we will do is mercury. So here is the mercury lamp. blue color indicative of mercury. By using a diffraction grating, which I'm using these spectral glasses to use a diffraction grating, I can separate the entire lamp into its component colors. So I'm going to put the diffraction grating over the lens of my camera. We can do the same thing for an incandescent light bulb. This is a 60 watt light bulb. Nice bright white light. As you can see we have a continuous spectrum. 
we can also apply the normal fluorescent lights in the room. So you can see we have some separation in those normal lights. It's a little bit less continuous than the incandescent light, but still we have the spectrum. And then we can also get uh, some indirect sunlight too. So let's go outside and get some indirect sunlight. And we'll apply our diffraction grating. You can see uh, the white light from the sun is a continuous spectrum.